Hello there, it's midnight and you're watching Nightline. The top stories... Cooperate to implement conditional MCO or face possible lawsuits, says Azmin Ali. And a COVID-19 swab test compulsory for foreign workers nationwide. Good morning, I'm Azaria Tagaya. Now that all regulations under the previous Movement Control Order MCO are null and void, state governments who do not comply face the risk of being sued for damages by businesses. Senior Minister of Economic Cluster, Dato Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali, on Monday warned that should the state governments refuse to cooperate in implementing Act 342, they may face the possibility of legal action from various parties, particularly the industry players. In a statement, Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin, who is also the International Trade and Industry Minister, said that some of the state governments have refused to cooperate and follow the federal government's new SOP, which is the conditional MCO. He urged state governments to continue previous cooperation in fighting against the COVID-19 outbreak by now working together with the federal government to open up businesses. He called for state governments to cooperate in executing the federal government's decision to regenerate the economy. The government, he said, is confident that all states, as a team, will succeed in winning the war against the pandemic. Meanwhile, Joho said it will follow the federal government's decision in imposing the conditional MCO, but with a few changes to suit its capabilities. Menteri Besar Datuk Hasni Muhammad said that the decision was decided during a meeting with the National Security Council, NSC, and relevant agencies. Manufacturers have been given the go-ahead for 24-hour operations in the relaxation of the national shutdown, but the state government said a ban on sports activities and dining in at restaurants would remain. Sarawak also said it will implement the federal government's latest directive to allow four people from the same home and family in one vehicle effective immediately. Its Deputy Chief Minister, Dato Amar Douglas Unga Mba, said the state would obey the new directive as it was gazetted by the law. The Malacca government does not allow any sports activities to take place and restaurants to cater to dine-in customers during the conditional MCO. Chief Minister Dato Sulaiman Muhammad Ali said that only the manufacturing industry is allowed to fully operate during the period and it would have to follow the standard operating procedure, SOP and guidelines. The previous Movement Control Order MCO regulation has been nullified upon implementation of the relaxed Conditional Movement Control Order CMCO on Monday. Senior Minister for Security Cluster of the National Security Council, NSC, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, said, however, all rules under the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988, known as Act 342, remain enforced despite the easing of certain restrictions under CMCO. Jadi jika ada pihak-pihak tertentu yang mengatakan kami masih ingin mematuhi akta dan peraturan di bawah PKP4, maka ianya salah di sisi undang-undang kerana PKP4, apa yang diwartakan di bawah PKP4 sudah pun terbatal dengan sendiri kerana kita telah pun menggantikan dengan peraturan baru di bawah PKP5. Jadi sebab itulah saya harap kita tidak keliru perkara ini kerana sekarang seluruh negara termasuk negeri dan daerah tertakluk ke kepada Akta 342 dan peraturan-peraturan yang diwartakan di dalam PKP 5 ini. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri, who is also Defence Minister, said there has also been some confusion among the people who thought that Act 342 was no longer enforced now that the MCO has been relaxed. He pointed out that it was wrong for the people to follow the fourth phase of the MCO, which had generally closed non-essential businesses and banned people from travelling beyond 10 kilometres from their homes. This as the CMCO now allows the reopening of the economy and free movements and social activities 
space for people, while mass gatherings and traveling to other states continue to be barred. At present, nine states have said it would not fully comply with the CMCO as of yet, with Kedah, Sabah, Pahang, Penang, Kelantan and Sarawak saying it would not follow the move, while Selangor, Pera and Negrisimbilan said it would limit the number of businesses allowed to resume operations. At the same media conference, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob announced that all foreign workers in Malaysia are now required to go for COVID-19 testing and their employers are required to bear the cost of the swab tests. This, he pointed out, was decided after the rise of COVID-19 cases in the country over the past few days, the majority of which comprising of foreign workers. Dua hari ber, berturut-turut, kita dapati terdapat peningkatan kes positif COVID-19. Dan ianya didapati berlaku kepada pekerja-pekerja asing yang bekerja di sebuah tapak pembinaan di Ampang. Untuk membendung penularan COVID-19 daripada terus merebak, maka pihak Kementerian Kerja Raya telah pun menutup tapak pembinaan tersebut. Dan sebagai Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri, who is also Defence Minister, said the screening would be compulsory for all foreign workers in all sectors, whether they are working in the commercial sector, construction, factories or restaurants, adding that the Health Ministry has proposed to start the swab tests in the federal territories and Selangor. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri stressed that the government will not hesitate to immediately shut down any premises where COVID-19 has been detected. <laughs> In another development, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the Enhanced Movement Control Order, EMCO, at several parcels in Pusat Bandar Utara, Kuala Lumpur, which was supposed to end on Monday, has been extended to May 12th. Bagi PKPD Pusat Bandar Utara, Kuala Lumpur, ataupun di berhampiran Pasar Borong, Pasar Borong, Kuala Lumpur, Pasal A dan B, yang meliputi jalan 6 Palang 3A dan 9 Palang 3A, Pusat Bandar Utara Kuala Lumpur serta Pasar Borong Kuala Lumpur juga telah ditamatkan semalam. Ya. Walau mana pun, bagi pasal C, D, E dan F di atas nasihat Menteri Kesihatan, Kita telah memutuskan untuk melanjutkan PKPD mereka sehingga 12 Mei 2020. The Defence Minister also said that the enhanced MCO at Menara City 1, Malayan Mansion, Solango Mansion and the Masjid India area had ended on May 3rd. Similarly, the EMCO at Tafis Annabawia and a house in Batu 23, Kampung Sungai Lui, Hulu Langat had also ended on Sunday. Now, with the start of the Conditional Movement Control Order, CMCO, on Monday, mall operators geared up to put preventive measures in place to adapt to the new normal. Some operators had gone the extra mile to ensure the health and safety of customers. As for Wanutama Shopping Centre in Pataling Jaya, Selangor, a new way was introduced to ease contact tracing. Our reporter, Miza Shafiza Muhammad Fuat, shares her experience of being a part of the new normal. In conjunction with the CMCO, Wanutama Shopping Centre has introduced this QR scanning health checks, which is set to roll out via its mobile application for staff members, tenants and shoppers. All you have to do is just scan the QR code that will be displayed all over the place in the mall. Then you are required to fill in the form, uh, an online health declaration form. Once you get a green light, that's it. You can now enter the outlet and start shopping. According to its Operational General Manager, Samantha Lee, this initiative could also help the tenants to ease the process of having them to register every shopper that comes in. Developed to ease contact tracing and uh, we are the first to actually roll this app uh, group-wide okay, among all our 12 properties. As for the tenants, most of them are glad they could reopen despite having to follow the given safety standard operating procedures, SOP.
I think the only challenges that we are facing right now is because we have to limit our customer six to eight percent at a time. So we have to take turns. We have to make queue numbers, and also we cannot uh, fit. We cannot do fitting. So there will no fitting for shoes. That's the only challenges. But other than that, customers are still coming in at the earliest time from 10 to 11 a.m. despite the RMO. Misa Shafiza for Nightline TV Digger. The long queue outside Kananga Wholesale City that had gone viral on social media was due to workers reporting in for duty and not shoppers looking to buy clothes, as speculated by some social media users. Kananga Wholesale City Complex Assistant Advertising and Promotions Manager Wendy Lam told a news portal on Monday that the individuals in the video are actually employees. She said the long queue had formed as workers had to go through temperature screening and other precautionary measures before entering the building. It is understood that there are around 800 offices and businesses in the wholesale clothing mall, some of which reopened today due to the conditional movement control order. Earlier, photos and videos of people lining up under the hot sun outside Kananga Wholesale City had gone viral since Monday morning, almost immediately fueling speculation amongst social media users. After two straight days of recording triple-digit growth in infections, the number of new COVID-19 cases dropped to just 55 in the last 24 hours. The number of new cases also continued to be trumped by recoveries at 71. Daripada 55 kes baru yang dilaporkan hari ini, tujuh kes adalah kes import. Ini bermakna kes penularan tempatan adalah sebanyak 48 kes di mana sebanyak 24 kes telah dikesan dari kluster dan lokaliti di bawah perintah kawalan pergerakan diperketatkan. Additionally, there were no new fatalities recorded today, which means the country's death toll remains at 105. The COVID-19 recovery rate is now at 70.58% out of the total number of positive cases, while there are only 1,764 active cases being treated at the country's health facilities at present. While restrictions have been eased for the Conditional Movement Control Order CMCO, Transport Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wika Siong assures that preventive measures are being practiced in the public transportation sector as public safety is paramount. Standard operating procedure SOP put in place includes compulsory temperature checks for every commuter, wearing a face mask, practicing social distancing and the daily sanitization of trains, MRTs, LRTs and buses. Bagi sesiapa yang tidak melepasi saringan kesihatan ini akan terus tidak dibenarkan untuk menaiki penumpang apa menaiki MRT ataupun pengangkutan, pengangkutan awam itu yang pertama. Kedua kita juga berikan hand sanitizer untuk mereka gunakan dan itu di hadapan gantry bermaksud sebelum dia masuk tu kita sudah saring. He also stressed that passengers must wear a face mask when on board any public transportation. The transport minister said passengers are allowed to request for face masks from their respective public transportation provider, but stressed that free face masks would only be distributed for the first two days of the conditional MCO. In addition, the transportation ministry has also ordered all public transportation operators to conduct sanitization works daily in order to maintain hygiene and health. In another development, the Transport Ministry is looking at make, making jail sentence mandatory for those caught drunk driving in view of recent incidents, some of which have been fatal. Its minister, Dato Sri Dr. Wee Ka Siong, said the country needs laws which impose harsher punishments and is considering amending the Road Transport Act 1987. If someone is DUI, lah. Ini driving under influence. Maksud ini adalah satu kesalahan dan kalau menyebabkan kematian, ianya di bawah Section 44, seseorang tu boleh dikenakan tindakan iaitu denda maksima 10,000 dan penjara maksimum 12 bulan. Dan kita lihat dua section ini sudah sampai masanya kita melihat 
nilai ambang threshold value itu. He added the punishment of suspending the driving license of offenders as practiced by some countries may not be enough to deter the suspect from getting back behind the wheel. As such, a stiffer punishment may also serve as a warning to other drivers. Datuk Sri Dr. Wee was commenting on the fatal crash involving a policeman early Sunday morning in which a drunk driver rammed his four-wheel drive into a roadblock near the Kajang South Toll Plaza in Slango, killing the policeman on the spot. The act Malaysia is trying to achieve between kick-starting its economy in facing the COVID-19 pandemic and the importance of adhering to new standard operating procedures, SOPs, is to prevent another wave of infections amongst the population. As such, Malaysia has put in place six R's to face the new normal in facing the new landscape post-COVID-19. Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, who enlisted them, said the six R's, however, will greatly depend on the strength of the rakyat. The six R's were resolve, resilience, restart, recovery, revitalize and reform. He shared Malaysia's approach in the online summit level meeting of the non-aligned movement NAM Contact Group via video conferencing on Monday night. The summit level meeting is being held in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has swept through the globe. He said Malaysia's concern is that if it is not united, smaller nations will be sidelined when the medication and vaccine is developed. In condemning unilateral coercive measures against NAM member states, Malaysia, he said, believes that NAM must play a more significant role to champion access and acquisition for smaller nations in obtaining medical supplies, medications and vaccines. Tan Sri Mudin said it was time to the... It was time to the 120 member NAM nations to come together and prove that by staying united, cohesive and steadfast, NAM can prove that it can overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. After the short breather, Bank Nagara expected to lower OPR to 2%. Details when we return. Thank you for staying with us. Now, Bank Nagara is expected to cut the overnight policy rate OPR down to 2% on Tuesday and subsequently to 1.7% in July, lower than the 2% reached during the global financial crisis in 2008 to 2009. Given that Bank Nagara had already cut 50 basis points or BPS since the start of the year, Standard Chartered Global Research said a 50 BPS cut in May would be appropriate to balance between the need to extend monetary policy support and and stability in monetary policy decisions, adding that growth projections remained highly uncertain. It added while fiscal pledges are significant, which is around 17% of the gross domestic product, indirect support such as loan moratoriums to individuals and businesses from banking institutions account for the bulk of support. It also estimated that the 50 BPS cut to the mortgage rate may help households save around 0.4% of GDP per annum. Pomodalan National Burhad PNB is committed to deliver higher dividend rates than the 12-month fixed deposit rate for all its 14 unit trust funds amid the challenging economy front impacted by the spread of COVID-19. As of 2019, PNB has distributed 13.2 billion ringgit to 14.3 million unit holders of Amana Saham National Burhad's 14 funds, while total payout since inception stood at 200 billion ringgit. So in terms of target dividend, we've always strived to exceed the performance benchmark, which is the 12-month fixed deposit rate. Uh, and this is what we have committed to in our prospectors when we launch our unit trust. We were always set up, you know, 42 years ago to be conservative and not take uh, excessive risk. And the idea was always that we will uh, give a very accessible uh, unit trust for all Malaysians to invest in that will pay a higher rate than the fixed deposit. Via email after this, 
He added that PNB has been able to deliver competitive returns as a result of realizing gains arising from a much better performance from its strategic investments despite the challenging years before this. PNB also unveiled the Focus 4 strategic plan from 2020 to 2022 to drive the next stage of growth. The key target is to increase global exposure to 30% by 2022 from 8.5% as of last year. Meanwhile, PNB Chairman Tan Sri Zeti Akhtar Aziz said PNB would continue to drive diversified portfolios through investment into new geographical and asset classes, including global real estate opportunities with favorable returns. It is an essential part in achieving better diversification of risk from the portfolio of investments across different asset classes. And our strategic asset allocation approach has shifted our future growth journey towards that of an asset allocator with the diversification of our investments of our portfolio as a key driver. We are also a long-term investor. She noted that the Focus 4 strategic plan is to drive the organization forward in the next three years. To gather critical Still to come on Nightline, authorities use water cannons to disperse MCO violators in Indonesia. This and more after the break. On to the foreign front, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Sunday said enormous evidence showed the new coronavirus originated in a lab in China. Pompeo said that the Chinese Communist Party is blocking foreign access to its labs, further fueling tensions with Beijing over its handling of the pandemic. Pompeo pointed out that China has a history of infecting the world and running substandard laboratories, and this is not the first time the world is being exposed to viruses as a result of failures in Chinese labs. His comments came as countries all around the world prepare to cautiously lift virus lockdowns as signs emerge that the deadly pandemic is ebbing and governments look to restart their battered economies. More than 245,000 people have been killed and 3.5 million infected worldwide by the virus, which has left half of of humanity under movement control order and pushed the global economy towards its worst downturn since the Great Depression. U.S. President Donald Trump increasingly critical of China's management of the first outbreak in the city of Wuhan in December last week claimed to have proof it started in a Chinese laboratory. In Indonesia, soldiers and police used a fire truck to spray water at people who violated the movement control order rules in the city of Makassar. Bontoola district head Shamsul Bakri said social restrictions were in order and Indonesians will have to obey those rules. Some cities and provinces in the nation have enforced tough social distancing rules, limiting gatherings to less than five people and only certain types of businesses are allowed to open. COVID-19 cases in Indonesia are still on the rise, recording 395 new cases today, bringing the total number of cases to 11,587. Indonesia's COVID-19 spokesman Ahmad Yurianto said the country recorded 19 fatalities in the past two days, bringing the total death toll to 864. Japan decided to extend the nationwide state of emergency until end of May amid warnings that relaxing physical distancing advice too soon could flood already crowded hospitals with COVID-19 patients. The restrictions were due to end on Wednesday. The extension comes as the medical system has been stretched thin by rising cases and economic activity depressed due to stay at home and business closure requests under the emergency declaration. The government's COVID-19 task force said the daily number of new infections is on a downward trend but has not yet reached the target level. The number of people to have contracted COVID-19 in Japan stood at 15,253 on Monday with 556 deaths. 
Italy is turning a new page, according to Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte, ahead of some 4 million Italians returning to work on Monday as the world's longest nationwide movement control order eased. They will be finally free to stroll and visit relatives for the first time in nine weeks. Restaurants that have managed to survive the country's most disastrous crisis in generations will be open for takeaway service. The use of public transport will be discouraged and everyone will have to wear masks in indoor public spaces. Italy became the first Western democracy to shut down virtually everything in the face of an illness that has now officially killed 28,884 people, the most in Europe. <laughs> Masks became mandatory on public transport Monday as Spain, alongside other countries around the world, took its first tentative steps towards a commercial reopening, with small businesses accepting customers by appointment and restaurants prepping food for takeaway. Spain's population of nearly 47 million have been confined to their homes for more than 50 days as the country sought to curb the spread of the deadly virus, which has so far claimed 25,428 lives. The daily death rate has been steadily falling, with the country on Monday counting another 164 deaths in 24 hours. Now let's take a look at the highlights in Malaysia's main newspapers for Tuesday, May 5th. The New Straits Times highlights on the warning by the federal government that states may face possible lawsuits for failing to comply with the conditional MCO. While report on compulsory COVID-19 tests for all foreign workers takes the front page of Berita Harian. And the nation's best-selling Malay newspaper, Harian Metro, as well as the Malaysian Reserve, features businesses that have opened cautiously on the first day of the eased COVID-19 restrictions by the government, abiding to stringent standard operating procedures. Do get your copies today or subscribe to the e-papers. And now, Star Wars fans around the galaxy rejoiced and celebrated on Monday as a special day known as May the 4th. Now, as we wrap up, let's take a look at this mashup of all the favorite moments from the Star Wars universe. I'm Azaria Tagaya. Thank you for tuning in. And to all our Muslim viewers, Lamat Basaho and May the 4th be with you.